quick look at ultrasound modes. A mode, the A is for amplitude. Remember we said the harder the target, the higher the spike, the higher the amplitude of the spike is going to be. B mode for brightness, and that gives us uh, all of these things, the static real-time and 3D B scan. And then M mode is derived from B mode, and we'll talk about that. So I'm going to put up this little theoretical thing. Let's say it's a, a cyst in an ovary or something. Well, in A mode, the way it would be displayed with ultrasound is the energy would go through. We'd get a spike from this wall, a spike from the back wall. So amplitude of those spikes relative to the density of the tissue we're going through. And again, that's what I started out doing. This was the machine we used for midline echoencephalography. This was before CT scanning in the emergency room. Patient came in after trauma. You wanted to know if they had an intracranial hematoma. This turned out to be not a bad tool for the job. So as the sound beam would go through, just diagrammatically here, let's say that's the third ventricle, then you would get these spikes corresponding to that. Well, what you did was you actually took two images. You took one image, took a Polaroid picture, then you went to the other side, inverted the oscilloscope, took another image, and this is what you would hope to find, which is the midline structures either coming from right to left or left to right line up with each other. Well, if there's a big mass in there, they won't line up with each other. So this kind of a pattern indicates there's something taking up space. Could be a tumor, could be a hematoma, post-trauma, most likely a hematoma. So that's the idea. Well, then the next step from amplitude mode is let's say, okay, instead of spikes, let's make bright dots. And the brighter the dot, it corresponds to the taller spike. So now this is B mode, the simplest form of B mode. Well, then we can start playing with that. You can send out, for example, from one of our transducers now, beams in different directions and log these little spikes that we pick up now as dots of varying brightness. And we actually then get an approximation of the actual structure that we were imaging. This is with a sector transducer where it all comes out from one point and radiates outward. Uh, here from what we would call a linear array transducer where it's got many parallel elements. But again, now on the screen you would get this approximation of what's actually under there. Also, this is, uh, allows us to get into moving images, real-time moving images. So in terms of the heart, we can both generate an image that gives a rough approximation of the anatomy of the heart, but we can also see these structures move in something approaching real-time, maybe 15, 20 frames per second. This is an example of one of those early images made up from rows and rows of parallel stuff. This was real time. We could see movement and heart activity. And that happens to be my first child, David, who's now 37. But uh, So useful technique right off the bat. Again, this also the same idea as we go through line by line. We're putting in dots of different brightness, except now we're putting in many, many more dots with a lot more sensitivity as to the level of brightness, the shades of gray. So on the Logic E, again, the, in this same cluster where we found the Doppler controls, we've got the B mode uh, button right here. And again, all logically laid out on this side. Now suppose we take that B mode image with the little bright dots and we somehow track it in time, either by tracing it out on moving paper or on a persistence oscilloscope, well, if the dots are representing stationary structures, you just get a couple of lines. Uh, but if they're representing moving structures, then you start to see these patterns. And if you turn that around, you know, pretty quickly you can see we're into what we use for cardiac evaluation, uh, where we end up with these patterns that can tell you uh, normal or abnormal motion of, say, the mitral valve and let us actually measure chamber size or myocardial thickness. This is an example uh, where we have the B-scan real-time image up here. We can see the beating heart. We can choose where to put this little line that's the area of interest. In this case, we wanted it to include both the ventricular wall and the atrial wall. And you actually see we're going along normally here, and then all of a sudden we have a premature atrial contraction. It's that extra little blip right there. So the M-mode button, again, in that same cluster on this side, uh, located here. 